Hi guys, I'm Randy with BRS TV and today we're shining the spotlight on the breakout box for the Neptune Apex to harness even more potential from this aquarium controller. Today we'll dive deep into what the breakout box is and how it can work for you as well as show you some of the common uses and how to install and program them on your tank. For many reefers looking to trick out their Neptune Apex controllers and turn their tank into the ultimate automated piece of equipment, adding the breakout box is definitely the way to go. With this little box, you can turn on cabinet lights when you open stand doors, install a push button doorbell to activate feed modes, get notifications for high and low sump levels, shut off your skimmer when the collection cup is full, and even use toggle switches to control equipment so you don't have to open your phone. Through the use of things like float, toggle, magnetic, and other similar switches, the breakout box can tell when these are open or closed, meaning whether they're completing a circuit or not, and based on those states, tell your apex to react by turning on or off specific outlets, as well as send out an email or text to your phone. Let's take a look at how many you'll need for what you want your tank to do. A single breakout box comes with the ability to monitor six switches and in many cases is more than enough for things like controlling pumps and skimmers when a sump is high or lower when the cup is full, push button feed modes, cabinet lights, as well as specific notifications if and when those things happen. However, the more elaborate you want to get with control, such as adding multiple toggle switches or adding even more water level sensing float switches, the more breakout boxes you'll need. So if you want to be able to turn equipment on or off with the flip of a switch, control all your maintenance and feed modes with a single push of a button, or get notified when that water storage is high, low, or in between, then you'll need more than one breakout box to accomplish that. One thing to note here for the Apex Classic and latest Apex controller, you can only plug one breakout box per base unit. If you need additional breakout boxes, you can easily add more to any PM1, 2, or PM3 module, as well as the module included with the PAR meter kit or PMK. Almost all the available accessories for the Neptune breakout box are going to be in some form of a switch that will open and close a circuit and tell the apex to perform a specific function based on what position it's in. The available switches are nearly endless and can be found here at BRS or at online supply companies like McMaster Car, your local electronics warehouse, or even potentially at some hardware stores. But today we'll focus on the most common ones that many reefers use. Just for reference, when the switch is closed, the breakout box will send a small amount of energy through the switch, and when the switch is open, it breaks that circuit, stopping the flow of that energy. The breakout box monitors that flow of energy and based on their state will tell the apex to turn on or off equipment. First up are float switches which open and close the circuit based on water level. These are mostly used for high and low water level sensors in the tank, sump, storage container or even ATO reservoir but can also be used to tell you when your skimmer cup is full or help you automate water changes. There are two types of float switches which are vertical and horizontal and in most cases the function of these switches can be reversed meaning that you can change whether the switch opens or closes the circuit when it's in the down position. By removing the retaining clip on the vertical switch and flipping over the float, you can change whether it's normally open or normally closed. Moving on to those of you who want to control your equipment like a skimmer or display lights with a flip of a switch rather than opening your phone or computer, you could use switches like a toggle, rocker, or even some styles of push button. Most of these switches can be flipped on or off and will stay in those positions until you physically flip the switch back. However, there are other types out there that will only stay on when you're pressing it and when released will go back to the off position, which is great for activating a feed or maintenance mode. A standard doorbell is a great example of this momentary style button. Now if you're like me and like to see everything under your stand lit up when you're working under there, you could use a magnetic reed switch to tell the apex to turn on a light when the cabinet door swings open. These switches may look familiar like from a home security system and have magnets inside of them that close the circuit when they're separated and open it when they're together. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, there are tons of switch options out there that you can choose from and they can be pretty fun to play around with. One of my favorite switches is a key style switch which you can use for important functions like maintenance and feed modes but also safeguard the tank from those modes being activated by younger members of the family, pets or even the accidental bump. To get our breakout box installed today, here's what we're going to use. The first is a breakout box itself which you'll see has switches labeled 1 through 6 as well as a reserve and a ground. These numbered inputs will be numbered the same on the Apex Fusion dashboard and the single ground will be shared by all the switches. For today's project, we'll be demonstrating a two-way toggle switch, a reversible vertical float switch, a doorbell and magnetic reed switch, as well as a three-way toggle. 
Lastly, we'll also need a couple of materials and tools like a small flathead screwdriver to fasten the wires into the breakout box and a bit of extra wire like the 22 gauge we're using. Finally, having a label maker to clearly mark which wire belongs to which switch is always a good idea when trying to keep multiple wires in order. Let's get the breakout box and new switches installed and ready to go on your tank. But before doing that, I like to extend the wires on most switches, since many times the included wires are too short to reach where our breakout box will be mounted, or not even included at all. There are many ways to tie wires together, including wire connectors for things like toggle switches, so just be sure that the method you choose creates a solid connection that won't separate easy, and that's resistant to water, especially for those switches that may be in or near the sump and tank. For today's project, we'll be using a two-way toggle to power off our return pump with the flip of a switch and a magnetic reed switch to turn our cabinet lights on. We'll also install a reversible vertical float switch near the top of the sump to detect when the water level is too high, along with a doorbell to activate a five-minute feed mode. Finally, we'll be using a three-way toggle switch to turn on and off our display lights when we don't want to do it manually through the Apex Fusion dashboard. So with my wires extended and my breakout box mounted, I can label each switch and start installing them into the breakout box. As you can see, the switches we're using each have two wires, which will be split between the ground and one of the numbered inputs. The only exception is the three-way toggle switch, which has a single ground in the middle and two separate on wires, which you'll see why in a bit. Just a quick note here, you may want to mount the switches before wiring them into the breakout box. In this case, we'll mount the two- and three-way toggle switch and doorbell on a panel near our apex and the magnetic reed switch on one of the stand doors. Some other float switches may require you to do some drilling or DIY a bracket to mount them, so we'll be using the vertical float switch from Digital Aquatics, which includes a handy mounting bracket. The next step is to wire the switches into the breakout box. One wire from each switch will be the ground, and all of them will go into the same ground port. It may be easiest to start by twisting all the ends together and securing them snugly into the ground. Now I can separate each positive end or wire that I labeled previously and insert them into their respective inputs. Here the two-way toggle will go in input 1, the tank stand lights will be in I2, high sump float will be in I3, doorbell feed mode in I4, and the three-way toggle and its two positive ends will go in input 5 and 6 since both of them will be used independently. Now plug in the breakout box into the I.O. port on your Apex base unit and we're ready to bring them to life. Now that we have all the switches ready to go, let's get into setting them up and programming them. In order to avoid confusion during programming, the first thing I'll want to do is rename each switch. For example, I'll name the two-way toggle Pump S as it's my pump kill switch, and I'll name the high sump float switch to Sump H. One thing to note here, you can only rename the switches directly in Apex Fusion with the latest Neptune Apex controller. However, for the classic versions of the Apex, you can create and name virtual outlets from the classic dashboard and use those to name your individual switches. Let's first start with the easiest switch to program, which will be the two-way toggle we named Pump S. We'll be using this toggle switch to shut off the power to our return pump for things like maintenance or water changes. In this case, all I need to do is hit the cogwheel on my return pump outlet, make sure that the control type is set to advanced, and add a single line of code at the bottom of the existing code that says, if pump S closed, then off, hit save, and that's it. Now if I toggle the switch I named pump S, it will close the circuit and the return pump will shut off. Once I flip the switch back to open, the pump will resume its normally scheduled program, which we can see here it's always set to on. Next I'll be installing the float switch because I want to be alerted when the water level is too high in my sump. I want to first make sure that when the float is resting or not underwater, that it leaves the circuit open. If you see that the switch is closed when it's just sitting there, simply remove the clip and flip the float over. With that done, all I need to do is go into my email alert outlet and type in a similar code to the previous one that says, if sump H closed, then on, which will activate the email and text alerts until the float is back down. Moving on to the lights under the stand, in order to get this one done, you will have to have installed the light already and have it plugged into one of your Apex outlets. With that already done and with the sensors mounted on the cabinet doors, you can access the light's advanced programming and enter a statement at the bottom such as if cab LT closed, then on. Since the circuit is closed when the magnets are separated, this will turn on the light when you open the doors. The next switch we'll program is the doorbell, which we'll want to activate a five minute feed mode after we press it. Since you can't actually activate one of Neptune Apex's existing feed modes with a switch, 
there's just a bit more programming that we'll have to do to recreate the same type of action with the push of a button. Also, here's a quick tip. Be sure to push and hold the doorbell for just a couple seconds to allow the Apex time to recognize that the switch is closed. First, I'll want to identify which outlets I want off during the feed mode, in which case I'll be turning off my left and right power heads as well as my skimmer. Since all three will be shutting off during the feed mode, I can type the program into one of them, then copy and paste it into the others. Here I'll type in the code if food closed, then off. However, now I need to tell my skimmer and pumps how and when to come back on, since the last command they got was to turn off. In order to do that, I want to use a simple defer statement, which essentially tells the outlet to wait five minutes, then come back on. I'll add the line defer five minutes, then on at the bottom, and I'm done. The outlets will turn back on after five minutes. Finally, let's talk about the three-way toggle switch. Now that we know we can turn on and off outlets based on open or closed switches, we can use that to our advantage when we want to override the regularly scheduled program. For this example, we'll be turning on and off the display lights on the tank. So why would we need two switches to accomplish this? Well, if your lights are scheduled to be on during 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the only thing you can do is shut them off with a single switch. However, if you wanted to turn on your lights after 5 p.m. or before 9 a.m., you would also have to have an additional switch to do that. To accomplish this, we can use the three positions of a three-way toggle switch to tell the lights to turn on when the switch is up, turn off when the switch is down, and go back to normal programming when the switch is in the center position. With this in mind, we can go into our display lights outlet and enter the program if on tog closed, then on. And directly below that, we can put the opposite, if off tog closed, then off. And we're done. Just remember, in order to get the lights back to the regular program, you will have to move the switch to the middle toggle position, and that's it. There are a lot of really cool things you could do with the switches you added to your breakout boxes. And if you really wanted to get deep down the rabbit hole of programming, there is a Neptune community forum specific to the breakout box where hundreds of fellow control freaks have posted the neat things they do with their breakout boxes. Maintaining this equipment is pretty easy, and as with most of our reef tank gear, keeping up with the maintenance can have it working for you for quite some time. Although the breakout box itself shouldn't require too much maintenance, keeping up with the firmware updates for your Apex is always best practice. Along with that, occasionally checking your wire connections and keeping them clear of any water or salt creep will make sure that they work consistently for you. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.